Hey everybody, Dr. Z here. So today we're going to be talking about how to lower your blood sugar and how is it that type two diabetes is completely reversible. Um, and I know that this sounds crazy because you know we're not used to hearing about this um, everywhere. I mean, our doctors from our communities, we're not used to hearing about this at all. So I know it sounds crazy, but today we're going to take that myth down and we're going to show you how to reverse type two diabetes with three simple habits, all while reducing your dependency in pills. So I want you to think back and go back in your life in a time that you were all charged up, that you had moments of unfiltered joy. This is the moments that you know that there is nothing else on your mind that you're feeling charged up and fully alive. And so I want you to think of moments like that. And how many of those moments were like that, right? And so I want you to think about um, times that, that happened as an adult. Also, moments in which that you felt, you know, pretty alive, pretty good, good about everything that you were doing in that moment and really nothing else on your mind. But there was this unfiltered joy, unfiltered um, happiness that you had in that moment. So I want you to think about that for a second. And some of us drift from that into jobs that we hate, into bodies that we tell ourselves that we're going to change, but we never do anything about it. Into taking all these pills and supplements that really don't even help us that much. And so I want to talk to you about diabetes today because diabetes can be a symptom of all of these things and can be uh, something that can cause all, all of these things. So what why is it such a big problem? Well, because one in three people uh, have prediabetes. One in every two persons are actually thought to be insulin resistant. So the insulin doesn't work. Remember that diabetes is the leading cause of blindness, is the leading cause of kidney disease, is the leading cause of heart disease, is the leading cause of stroke, is killing so many people silently. So that's why it's such a big deal for us to take a look at it. And it's just so hard right now because look, our environment is not really setting us up for success, misleading con misconceptions in our society, telling us that diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. Even the American Diabetes Association, that's what they said. I continuously check their website in the hope that maybe they they, they do say what the science shows, but they don't. Why is that? I'm going to break that down. The common knowledge lags behind the science sometimes. Pharma companies have a big advertisement. I'm not against pharma companies at all. I'm just saying right here that pharma companies have a big budget in advertisements. So the message that we hear the most is the medications. They are useful in many ways. Last night, I admitted a patient that needed insulin right? Because otherwise he's not going to heal from his foot. But that is, there could be different ways around it, uh, especially for a type 2 diabetics, but because the advertising is so heavy from pharma companies, this is the only message that we hear, the only message that we hear. And then doctor's education um, is shaped by the guidelines that are given from the American Diabetes Association and the expert panels. And to be honest with you, these panels are great, but if they are rich in conflict of interest, it can, this message can be swayed, and this is what's happening. So if you are listening to this and you are worried about having an amputation, if you are listening to this and you are worried about about dialysis, if you're listening to this and you're worried about having a heart attack, if you're listening to this and you're worried about having a stroke, this is the right place for you because I'm going to show you how, how diabetes is actually the leading cause of all these things, the leading cause of stroke, the leading cause of heart attacks. And so I'm going to show you how to actually reverse type 2 diabetes with three simple habits, okay? 
So what if there was another way? What if there was another way that you could actually reverse type 2 diabetes? It's so crazy because right now in our society, we think that this is an impossibility, but at the same time, we can see somebody who had a lot of weight, they lost all the weight, they started eating healthy, they started exercising, their doctors take them off of all the medications, and that person is not lying, they don't have type 2 diabetes anymore. So, and there are many proofs of that. So what is the other way? The thing is that the other ways are habits, but habits don't just happen overnight. And they could happen overnight. They could be started overnight, but there is a certain <clears throat> framework that has to happen for you to be able to implement habits and change the way that you live. The problem is that it doesn't matter how many books that you read. It doesn't matter how many events you go to. It doesn't matter how much information you gain. The problem is that if your environment is not pushing you and guiding you and motivating you to achieve these goals, these habits are probably not going to be executed. <clears throat> these habits are probably not going to be exercised and implemented into your life. So changing your life is changing your environment they're changing your habits. So I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer a diabetes-free life with three simple habits. What does this mean? It means that we're going to look at people who've done it, and then we're going to work ourselves back to see what they've done. And this is what I like doing and what I spend all my life doing. I'm going to help you today to understand why the current system is not working and show you the system that has been shown to work. I'm going to help you understand your body so that you can harness the way that your body works in your physiology because you already have it. So we have to use it. The third thing I'm going to show you is how to unlock the methods necessary for you to become less dependent on medications. And I'm going to also show you how it is possible to escape the hamster wheel of emotional and physical pain that this disease brings upon you. My goal for this webinar is to show you the only way that you can escape the endless cycle of type 2 diabetes is to actually look at a case study of somebody who has done it already and work yourself backwards. And I myself have seen a lot of case studies that of people who have worked themselves backwards. So buckle up because I'm going to go fast. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them and, uh, and we can answer them. So my name is Dr. Andres Suleta. Who am I? I am a practicing medical doctor. I am the founder of Samasta. I run Samasta Health Academy. I've trained in anything I think that my patients could benefit and that I think my life could benefit and that I think my clients could benefit from getting a competitive edge. I was initiated as a shaman as a result of this because I thought that there was so much valuable information that ancient medicine has to teach us. Also, I trained in neuro-linguistic programming. Also, I trained as a life coach. Also, I trained as a health coach. Also, I trained as an integrative medicine specialist. And I've treated thousands of patients around the world um, in, in more than five continents. And I'm also the co-founder of the Wellcare Summit. I was born in Medellin, Colombia. This is where I grew up. And at that time, it wasn't easy, actually. There was a lot of this going on. There was a lot of violence and there was a lot of commotion in the streets. And even though this community in this country taught me so much, there is so much resilience that I learned from this. There are things that it impacted me and I didn't know at that time. One of those things were different um, frameworks, different, different attitudes toward certain things, right? And so in... The city where I grew up, there was a big drug dealer called Pablo Escobar. And Pablo Escobar, you've probably seen him from many different series. And we used to see his name in some sort of way in the TV almost every single day. And Pablo Escobar, the persona that he gave wasn't simple. And so as a young man, you don't really understand what was going on. But there is certain things that, you know, you see a man with power with money, with, with um, women, with everything, right? That you think, but you know that he's doing crimes. So it's very complicated for a young man to understand what's going on. And 
how this happens. And then also, as you can see in this mural here, in this mural, you can see that there's a painting of him in these neighborhoods. Well, there is a neighborhood that he built, right? And so even though he used this in a way to give back, maybe in some sort of way, but also to manipulate the people that lived in these neighborhoods. And he used to uh, get a young man into his army uh, to kill and everything from this. So it's a very skewed sense. And this trickles down into some sort of the way into the country, good and bad ways. Uh, and so for me, uh, definitely, I realized I had to grow out of that. And I had to realize, you know, what is to be a man? What is true manhood? What is actually creating value for the world? What is to be financially healthy and a financial leader? What is all of these things um, in a healthy way that uh, impacts me and my family in a good way in our communities? Um, even though all of this was happening, I did have a dream at a very early age to become a doctor. Uh, it wasn't easy though. Um, first, you know, it was really hard. We went through ups and downs and uh, I started working, uh, selling air fresheners in the street. And some of these gas stations that you see here were the gas stations that I myself used to work as a kid selling these air fresheners. Uh, and eventually I came to the United States. I became a physician. And from then on, I started to understand uh, medicine and, and, and I started to be trained in medicine as any young doctor does. And one of the things that I realized going back is that when I started learning that type two diabetes was reversible, I was upset to be honest with you. I was upset at the, the system that, that trained me. I was upset at myself. I was upset at my colleagues. I was upset at myself mainly because I wasn't practicing medicine closer to the truth. And then and I was looking back into my own slides that I used to use. And this is actually one of the slides that I used many years ago to train and to teach younger doctors. And as you can see here, there is nothing about reversibility that type 2 diabetes can be reversed. There is nothing about how diet and exercise can impact it. There is nothing about simple dietary changes can actually transform somebody's uh, system. And there's nothing about that here. So I was like, oh my God, even I was a part of the problem. So I, start, I stopped being mad at myself. I had to, to be able to move forward and create something that actually helped people understand this better. And so while I was going through that, I then realized that there had to be a better way. And I went in deep into the science of type two diabetes, the experts, what did the latest studies really show? And I was incredibly understanding more and more and more of how this disease could actually be completely reversed in about 86% of the people. So then I had to, um, as I was traveling and reading all of this, I came across the blue zones. And the blue zones are areas around the world where most people live 80s, 90s. And I became fascinated as to why these people don't have type 2 diabetes, why these people don't have heart diseases, why these people don't have as many strokes, why these people die of old age and they drop off, they don't get sick, they just pass when they're older in their, to their 90s. Why is it? And at the same time, I came across this other study that also showed that yes, there are these pockets of people but most of the world is actually not doing too well. And it showed that actually 7% of the world is only thriving, only 7% of the world. So it became my mission to actually share this message to get more people into a thriving state of being so that they can actually live their lives that they want. And because we have all the information and technology right now, we owe it to ourselves to use it and to share it with the patient. I mean, I signed a Hippocratic Oath that says do no harm, so I must do this. Now, I have traveled all over the world and seen thousands of patients in South America, Central America, North America, Europe, Africa, um, Asia, and Polynesia. And, and I've started seeing patterns, you know, 
as you see so many people, you start noticing patterns. You cannot help but to do it. You cannot help but to do it. And so I started noticing patterns and these patterns, I started sharing them back into my hospital practice, back into seeing my patients. But I realized that there was so much pressure and there is so much uh, already, there is such a big system that this alone was not going to work. Yes, there is some benefits into me spending a bunch of time with a patient in the hospital and talking to them about it, but I needed to share it into a bigger stage. So I started speaking about this and I founded the, the Welker Summit. I started sharing this message. And so if this is my story, I learned what it takes for people to reverse the type 2 diabetes. And I know that just like I found what the root of disease, you can, you can actually uncover this root of disease for you. Just like I replaced habits that were sabotaging my own life as I was coming out of Colombia into the US. And as I realized that type 2 diabetes could be reversible, you can too. As I learned the habits to systematically transform uh, daily struggles into actually wisdom that you can turn into your own health, you can too. And just like I have reverse engineered the art and science of thriving and reversing type 2 diabetes, you can too. So I'm going to show you how to discover the root of type 2 diabetes without a band-aid diagnosis. I'm going to show you how to discern through all the overwhelming diet advice and understanding how to become a modern hunter and gatherer. I want you to create that mindset. And and Secret number three, I'm going to help you to know how environments can actually set us up for success or failure of a diabetes-free life. So at the end, if you stay until the end, I'm going to share with you a gift. For those of you who stay until the end, I'm going to share with you a gift. And if you want the gift, please type um, in with your email, and then I can send it to you. Some people who are looking to escape type 2 diabetes tell me, I don't understand how to get there. I don't know how to escape. I don't even know where to start. So let's start with a story. There was a patient who came into the emergency room. I went down there to admit her into the hospital. And at that time she was very sick. She had a huge blood sugar, a very high blood sugar. She had obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. Uh, and she was having a heart attack. Uh, she was having a mild heart attack. And so as I talked to her, I asked her, how, you, how has your health been all your life? And she said to me, I actually was super healthy until I had a breakup. And this breakup was very harming to my self-worth. After that, I actually started eating and, 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 and not treating myself well. And I started getting sick and sick and sick. And look, 10 years of this, here I am. And so what I want you to understand is look at the root of her disease. The root of her disease, was it diabetes? Was it insulin? Well, she told us that she had a challenge, that she had some sort of hardship. Now we know through science that there are challenges, abuse, household challenges, and neglect. That mainly in kids, these challenges create an increased chance of developing 3.9% times higher risk of lung disease, two times higher risk of heart disease, 1.9 higher risk of cancer, 1.6 higher risk of diabetes. Now, I think from what I've seen, from all the patients that I've seen, that this is not only in kids, that adults, just like these patients, when there is some sort of traumatic experience or adverse experience, it creates an imprint in the body. And this imprint starts ruling almost this person's life. They have very fearful, they become uh, addicted to certain things, could be alcohol, could be food. And this turns into chronic diseases. These habits turn into chronic diseases. So yeah, right now you might also be thinking, well, what do I care? I don't understand how this can help me. Well, if we can get to the root of what the disease is for this patient, for instance, it wasn't so obvious. But we know through science that this is the case, that some of that, that is a contributing factor into what she does. So I want to show you that the truth is that 80% of chronic disease can be prevented. And I want to show you how with this patient, 
we've been failing all these patients with the current system. Why is not working? Take, for instance, this patient comes in with a heart attack. We don't know uh, much about this other history, usually, for this patient. But we know that she has a heart attack. This is how the heart looks when it's having a heart attack. Is the muscle dying. This muscle can actually leak chemicals into the blood. An amazing system that we have created. Some people call it the reductionist system. That could be a name. I call it the specialist system because it's specialized. And so it can give us blood work. It can give us an EKG. It can give us a picture through a cath that can show us where these blockage is. And uh, it can actually help us do medications and treat the patient with a stent and do a surgery. And then what? And then this patient goes home and they are lost. They don't know what caused it. They don't know how to prevent it. They don't have the right support. They don't have the right information and they don't have the right models of execution for them to actually carry out what they need to do or what they feel like they want to do to actually reverse this disease. And so five years later, they'll end up in the hospital with another stent, with another heart attack, with another traumatic event. So now there is a change in paradigm and I've made it my mission to actually become a part of this solution. We cannot fight the old system anymore. We have to create a new one that is, makes the old one irrelevant, but incorporates what we learn. We can't ditch every scientific and every technique and everything that we've done. Uh, medicine is amazing. It gives amazing gifts. So the current paradigm shows that, look, we are a part of an ecosystem and these ecosystems have different temperatures. These temperatures and climates and uh, biomes lead to different uh, smaller ecosystems like cities. These cities, you could live in a city that harms you. You could live in a city, you could be born in a city right now in the world that has 30 years less life expectancy. So if you're born in that city, you're, you're, you're likely to live up until you're 40 or 45. But if you're in a country that has a mortality of 80s, 90s, you just made 30 years just by the where that you were born. And so how can we tell that the environment is not important, right? So that's important. And then our own communities are important. Some communities want you to drink. Some communities want you to do drugs. Some communities want you to dance. Some communities want you to eat healthy and spend time with family. What is your community doing to you, right? And then how about our jobs? Is our jo are our jobs important? Absolutely. Monday is the highest day of heart attacks than any other week. Now, here's the thing. Tuesday is also when they went in deeper and Wednesday also. So he said the week or he said the job, right? And Thursday and Friday is a little bit less. And so stress, job environments have a very impactful. So if you're not enjoying what you're doing, Literally, think about that because you're, we're, we're likely dying because of it. And so if you're something that you love so much and you're willing to die for it, well, that just gives you a higher purpose for freedom. But if you're something that you don't enjoy to begin with, then get out of there because it's hurting you. So what we see, what we hear, what we touch, what we smell, what we taste is hugely important. And so this is where we come through our bodies, through our minds, and through our environments, the biopsychosocial model, right? And so this leads us then to realize that seven out of 10 deaths in Americans are because of a chronic disease, seven out of 10 deaths. And the World Health Organization noticed that these deaths are because of unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and tobacco use. So if we know this, why is the whole world not doing it, right? So... I want you to share with you the first secret, which is how to discern and discover the root of type 2 diabetes without just a band-aid diagnosis. So they give you a diagnosis, you're type 2 diabetic. Just today, I had somebody in the phone and they were like, yeah, my doctor told me I was pre-diabetic. And they didn't know anything more about it because there was not the right system to actually take this patient in a journey to teach them, hey, this is what's happening in your life right now. It's going to hurt you a lot. And this is how you avoid it. If you want to be hurt, no problem, that's your choice. But if you want to avoid it, here, here is how. So I want to take you back in history a little bit. 
it was in 1988 where pancreatic diabetes was discovered. They noticed that it was the insulin from the pancreas. If that wasn't there, people died. And then in 1921, it took a long time to actually say, wow, it's because of this thing called insulin. But then we thought that type 1 diabetes was the same and type 2 diabetes was the same. And so the discovery of insulin overshadowed the fact that they are two completely different diseases. And we think that type 2 diabetes, that the cure of it is insulin when it's not. Type 1 diabetes is insulin. And that's only 5% of the patients. So we need to rethink that. Now, in 1997, Dr. Walker Willett from the uh, Department of Epidemiology at Harvard University realized and started noticing that, wow, gain weight has actually a complete correlation with type 2 diabetes. Because at that time, in 1997, the Department of Agriculture said that a little bit of gain weight for a man was normal and was actually healthy which was completely now we know that is not true. And Dr. Walter Willett, he actually started to realize and connect the dots that, hey, if you gain weight, this is actually completely related to diabetes. Just eight pounds can raise your chances of diabetes exponentially and 15 pounds even more exponentially to the thousands, you know? So it's very important to realize that this is kind of how we got here. So. And so I want to explain to you type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes uh, is where insulin is made, it's not made in the body, so there is no insulin. And in type 2 diabetes, there is insulin, but it cannot be used. And so the normal person on the left, you can see the sugar is the little white dots, and the insulin is the little green ones, and the insulin lets the body use this sugar. So in the right side, we see somebody who is diabetic and the sugar accumulates, accumulates into the blood vessels. Now, the problem here is that insulin, if we give the patient insulin, we're actually making it worse with type two diabetes because insulin can lead uh, to more insulin resistance. As you can see the insulin here and the glucose, the sugar, the insulin is what helps the sugar be used in the body. So it takes it from the blood vessels that we can see right now, like the highways, and it pushes it away into being used. If this is a normal, we use it. But if it's abnormal, it's like, it's like you taking all the garbage in your house and, and hiding it below your bed, below in your closet, and you just keep hiding the garbage. And so this is what a type two diabetic is. Their insulin is not actually getting rid of the sugar. It's just hiding it. So it's making it worse and worse and worse and worse over time. So now insulin resistance, then the key, when that key of insulin doesn't work, it leads to prediabetes, which one in three people have. Type 2 diabetes, obesity, belly fat, heart attacks, strokes, fatigues, high blood pressure, Hunger, it makes you so hungry because it taps into the hormones and it's a hormonal problem. So we cannot treat it with drugs when it's a hormonal problem and it's a di dietary problem. So, so secret number two that takes me into, okay, how do we use our mind to be able to hunt and gather? How do we get the skills to be able to do that? So I wanted to give you three skills to do this. The first one before we go into the first one, I want to show you what the paleo diet, the ketogenic diet, the blue zone diet, what is all of this and how do you discern through all of this? Well, I'm going to give you the three skills. And so you might be saying right now, I'm not good at following diets and getting rid of things I love to eat. That even if I do the right thing, it will not work for me. Let me share you a quick story. I used to believe that type 2 diabetes was a chronic and progressive disease until I realized that it was a reversible disease. And so then I discovered that the way to tap into your own body is actually through the diet, through our own body, uh, to tap into our own body. And I realized that the word medicine doesn't mean a pharmaceutical. The word medicine, when you look at the root of the word, it actually means appropriate action. So now we need to realize what is the appropriate action I need to take to restore the body to take away anything that is inhibiting it from healing or to enhance it, right? And so that is medicine. 
Now, a pharmaceutical sometimes is the appropriate medicine or a supplement might be the appropriate medicine. Going out for a walk might be the appropriate medicine for certain things. Going into nature might be the appropriate medicine for certain things. So we need to reshape the word medicine. So I'm going to show you what these tactics are. What are these actions that could help you reframe your skills of type 2 diabetes um, and reverse type 2 diabetes? Now, the first thing before we go into the first, which is very important, that we are all different. Is this for real? Yes, this is for real that we are all different. So what I want you to realize is that you can get all these advice from different diets, right? And while they all great, we are all different. So you are different than I am. And we're realizing that our microbiome has a lot to do with this. And so if you eat a banana, your glycemic index, meaning how much sugar rises in your body goes up. And if you, if I eat a banana, it goes up, but it's different how much it goes up. So we are completely different. So some people who are looking for this extraordinary health might be thinking, you know, I'm not good at diet and I don't believe in this. So I'm going to share with you these three habits. The first one is bio-individuality. Like I mentioned, we are all different. The second one is crowding out. The third one is the 95-5. So bio-individuality is what it is, that we are all individually and that our biology is completely individual. And so this is what I wanna show you here is that this study right here showed that personalized nutrition actually leads to individual glycemic responses, meaning that people's sugar go up and down differently. Okay, so the second thing, so what I wanna you do, the skill that I want you to develop is to be able to test for yourself everything. So if you wanna do a ketogenic diet, does it work? Like people come and say, does it work? It works work for a lot of people, but there is only one way to know if it works for you. The high fat, low carb diet, does it work? It works for a lot of people, but there is only one way to know. It's like going to Disneyland, like you said, beautiful? Yeah, it's beautiful, but the only way to really get it is to experience it. And so you must experience your bio-individuality. You must experience how unique you respond to things. The second habit that I want to give you today is crowding out. This is a skill that you must develop. Crowding out, and there's a lot of detail and there's a lot of ways to do it, which is amazing and it can completely transform people's lives. Uh, you have to go through a set of, 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 of processes and make it harder for your brain to go to the safest place for the cravings. Now, we know that sugar is seven times more addictive than cocaine, so it's not gonna be easy. So we got a big fight to fight, but through crowding out, it's simple because there, crowding out means that you can only fit so many people in an elevator. So if you already have something, you're not gonna tell your body, look, hey, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm not gonna eat that candy anymore. You can tell your body, look, I'm gonna do it in 10 minutes. And this has been shown scientifically to really help with addictions. And sugar is an addiction that we all have and we go in and out of it. Um, and so crowding out allows you to say, hey, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes. And then in those 10 minutes, I have two choices, three choices. One choice is to meditate on these, to think about what the impacts are and think about why not do it and think about the consequences. The second option, which actually most people end up doing is to continue the task at hand for 10 minutes. Just continue the task at hand. And then the third option is actually to continue the task at hand, but put something into your body, water, uh, to actually fill you up. And then and if water doesn't work, then you can try in the specific diabetes uh, problem, type two diabetes, high fat, healthy fat food. And of course there's a lot of specifics about that, but that is a great way to hack, biohack your hormones into giving you full, uh, a sense of fullness fast. So this could be a great way to do that. Now, the 95 to five is that 5% of your food, there is a lot of different guides out there, right? and all of them are good. The truth is that if you wanna do this as fast as 
possible, fasting is the best, fastest way to do it. If you want to go a little bit slower, 95.5 or a very focused plant-based diet is the case. And if you want to go a little bit slower, um, you can add a little bit more of the food. But the 95.5 rule is the best one from my perspective that allows for a good middle. Uh, it's taken from the blue zones where people live up to 90 years old. How they do it is they're not, most of their diet is 95% fruits and vegetables. Most of their diets, they do eat some meat only in celebratory phases. So now this is only the tip of the iceberg and I'm not, this is for the purposes of this talk. I don't want to go into detail, but the primary nutrition is really your purpose, your physical health, your community, your social and your financial security. Not only because this is important, but because science shows us that when these are out of whack, people have lower health outcomes. So your health is impacted if you're not dealing with one of these things. And the last thing is foundational nutrition, which is the skill. It's a skill that needs to be built to use your mind so that you can actually continuously use these three principles. And it's changing the way that you deal with these adverse reactions. Now, remember the well-being study. This well-being study showed that only 7% of the people were thriving in these areas, in their purpose, in their physical health, in their community, in their careers, and in their financial security. So it's very important to actually reframe all these things to be able to uh, deal with them so that we have a better life. Now, the last thing I want to share with you is how to transform your surrounding into rocket fuel to reverse your type 2 diabetes without being crippled by an idea in crisis because look i know what you're saying right now people come to me and they tell me look i don't know what the toxic patterns are i don't know if my environment is health really hurting me well i used to think that people coming to the hospital and they got better just because we gave them medications but soon i started realizing that a lot of times we would put the patients in the hospital we give them iv fluids and we give them nothing by mouth and they got better for many ailments actually and so then I realized like, wow, that's pretty simple. IV fluids, nothing by mouth. That's really simple. I wonder like what's wrong? Like, why is that happening? And I realized that it was a controlled environment and their, uh, the influences on these people are enhanced over the time that they're in the hospital. So they're not putting anything in their body that's hurting them through their eyes, ears, nose, anything. And so... Let me tell you a story of how to, how, to, how to tell this. So I had a patient and his sugar, I could not get it down. I used tons of insulin to try to get this patient down. And as I'm seeing him, one of the afternoons, it was a late afternoon and I was in my way out of the hospital. I came up to see him and I saw this sitting right next to him. And I thought to myself, like at that time, I didn't really know a lot about nutrition as I do now, but I looked at this, uh, bottle and I said yeah it has to probably be healthy you know it's a tea and it's green so probably healthy well not really uh it is a lot of sugar here and so just like this tea is having so much impact in this patient's health guess who was bringing this tea thinking that they were helping his family and so just because your family means the best it doesn't mean that is the thing that is actually going to help you so that's why it's so important to get educated, to reach people who's very educated on this, to be able to help you discern and take the decisions that are the shortest time to achieve. So I took these out of the patient and his sugar actually came down fast. He didn't drink it while he was in the hospital and he came down real quick. We had to use like two units of insulin pretty soon the next day. Um, <clears throat> And when we can get it down. So the study in Finland also shows that there's a very big power of environment, right? They actually studied their communities and they implemented, uh, they talked to farmers, they talked to doctors, they talked to everybody who, had, who was a stakeholder and <clears throat> they all shifted into creating more healthy food supplies. 
and making it easier for people to be able to acquire the things that were going to make them healthy. When they realized that in five years, men ages 35 to 64 dropped their cardiovascular death by 50%, 57%, which is insane. And so then they prolonged the study over 25 years and they actually showed that about 75% of these people had a decrease in their cardiovascular mortality. So that's pretty crazy from a heart attack. It was decreased completely. So you might also be thinking right now, this cannot help me. How can I look through my environment? Well, you can. You can look through your environment. There are things that we know now and products that we know now that are more than others. And I've done a lot of the homework on this and many people have too. Uh, I've actually put it in a way that is very simple to digest. And so we can learn these new skills to be able to use our biology, our bodies, our minds, and, and our environments to be able to uh, get over this and create a pattern interruption. A pattern interruption means that you stop and you l draw a line in the sand and say, you know, from this moment on, I'm going to change this. From this moment on, I'm going to become a person who's in the journey of completely uh, reversing their type 2 diabetes. So if you're interested in this, uh, set up an appointment, samastahealth.com forward slash apply, samastahealth.com forward slash apply. And you will be able to get access to my personal calendar where you're able to book a call and we can sit down and I will give you in this call, we can go through all the barriers that are holding you back and then how to overcome these barriers and what are the things from your own personal experience to that I can see and then give you feedback that you can take on uh, with yourself. Now, uh, what's the catch here? Well, the catch is that, first of all, if I can give you some feedback, that's great, and spreading the message. Second of all, if you think that is great feedback, and if we think that we can work with you as a good fit, then that would be where we could take you to the second uh, and, and into our more intensive programs. So the most important thing is that in those minutes, in the study, to 45 minutes, we will give you as much feedback as we can uh, to be able for you to go even by yourself and create this health. And if you feel like we could accelerate that process for you, absolutely, we'd be uh, happy to do that because that's our mission. So if you have any questions, send an email, send a message on Facebook uh, or book a call at Samasta health.com forward slash apply until next time take care dr zuleta here bye bye